The Land Rover Discovery 3 is the second generation. The LR3 was introduced in April 2nd, 2004 and discontinued in 2009. The LR3 is arguably when the Land Rover really started to become somewhat reliable. However, they can start to be a bit pricey in repairs, especially if you take it to the mechanic. Because of that, I looked deep into the LR3 to find out what main issues you should know before buying the Land Rover Discovery 3. Let's get started. Now the most frightening issues will always start in the engine bay. The first one really isn't all that scary, but the fuel injectors tend to clog and they actually need regular cleaning. This really is not a hard job to do on your own. You will need 44K fuel injector system cleaner and a deep funnel to place in the gas tank. Pretty easy stuff. The LR3s are prone to overheating due to the water pump or the thermostat going out. If this happens, pull over immediately so you won't have any internal damage. That would nearly total the car. Now, there are a lot of people complaining, even after changing the water pump and thermostat, that they are not having heat in the cabin and still the car is overheating. So the automatic thoughts are clogged heater car, which is correct. While you replace a water pump and such, be sure to do a full coolant flush. If this still does not work, then a few people talked about squeezing the coolant hoses going into and out of the heater car to help burp or unclog the heater car. Not a hard fix at all, you just have to be patient. The dashboard is very prone to cracking. Replacing the dash can be very pricey. And there's no great fix for this besides getting a nice fancy dashboard mat or replacing it in total, which I personally would not do. The front steering tie rods are weak. If you can wiggle the wheel and you can feel shaking in the steering, then the tie rods are going out. This is not a terrible job to do. If you are comfortable with handling tools, you should be good. Now, the front lower control arms do have issues. The bushings tend to fail and cause a popping noise, but the recommendation is to replace the entire control arm because the ball joints also tend to fail as well. To do this, you will need a lot of patience, and I mean a lot of patience. I would say this is a harder job to do, so look up a few videos to see if you can do this kind of job. Sometimes the control arm may require some angle grinder persuasion. Air suspension compressor can go out. Well, they do not really completely go out, but they tend to get split on the air dryer, which is very common. And you can buy yourself a $70 part from eBay to fix that issue. And there are reports that the pair are only taking about 20 minutes. However, if you're looking for a Land Rover and the truck is higher in the front or back, then a common cause is the level sensor, which is also not a hard thing to replace. Sunroof drains commonly clog up and cause water to get into the car and the seals go bad. So that is that. There can be loud whining from the rear diff around 60 and 70 miles per hour. If it happens and there is only noise when you press on the gas and let off, you should be good without replacing the components for a while. Just the noise will get louder and a bit more annoying. However, if the noise is consistent, no matter what, it is probably the bearings and they should be replaced because they can cause complete diff failure. However, if you do not have any noise, it is recommended to replace the diff fluid a lot more frequently than the manufacturer recommendations to prevent any issues at all. The fuel pump can fail, which is typical with any car of age. If you're looking for a cheaper fuel pump, be sure you grab one with fantastic reviews so you don't have to replace it again in a few months. And to sit down there, go ahead and replace all the fuel level sensors as well. Or if you're having a fuel pump issue, it could be loose terminals on the fuel sending unit and renewing them could be an easy thing to do before you have to replace a whole fuel pump. The remote fob not working due to the sunroof leaking into the floor channel and messing up wiring down below and the wires to the automatic door locks. 
Overall, the Land Rover LR3 is a great truck and there are a great number of them lasting well over 200,000 miles and some 400,000 miles. These vehicles can be very pricey to have if you're not comfortable grabbing some tools. However, if you're hands-on, then you shouldn't have any major issues besides the lower control arms. They are truly built to last. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to press that like button, subscribe, and press the notification bell to stay up to date with more car advice. This is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate one another. I'll see you next time.